we're going to have a look at an absolutely lovely pen, uh, but I don't know why I talk that way. Uh, this is the Wancher Seven Treasures Bakelite Fire Fountain Pen. And uh, Aziza sent this to me, she, it, was, it was sent to her and uh, she sent it to me, so I thought I might as well review this. Very interesting. Bakelite, basically an early plastic, and it's a pen. And it has some very specific nice artwork on it, uh, on the finial, which I will show you up close when we are focusing the camera down. I think it's a very interesting pen. My first impression was, hey, a jewel fold. It has definitely that, that feeling to it, including the, the, the shape of the cap and the, the bands on the cap, in my mind. Uh, which is not, I'm not saying, like, I, 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 there are only so many pen shapes, really, but that was the, the impression I got. Larger pen has a lot going for it, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, but before I do that, I'll do a writing sample. Now, I just want to show you this here, because if I point the camera down, I don't have much of a field of view. This is the box the pen comes in. These Wancha boxes, I think, are really quite nice. This is a Japanese brand. They use this soft wood. Uh, and in the box are a couple of things. Uh, there is this uh, authentic imitation silk kimono. Uh, at least, I don't know, I don't know what this is. But it's a very, it's a very soft material with a, a very soft lining, which feels a bit like suede or something, which is very nice. I don't know if you can see, but it has this sort of pattern on it, which is really quite nice. I think it's a nicely designed little kimono for your, your pen. Nice sleeve. What else do we have? Uh, we have uh, this product care, which is pretty cool because it has a QR code, so you just scan it and you're brought there online, taken there online. And then there is a little uh, warranty certificate, uh, which I think is, uh, is, is quite nice as well. And this beautiful uh, what shall we call that? Burgundy? Mm -hmm. Nice red vermilion, maybe? Anyway, nice red lining, which I think is really cool. So, having said that, let's tilt the camera down, let's look at the actual parts of the pen, see how it writes. Let's do it. I'll talk a bit more about the pen when I point it down, but I think it's easier, if, it's nicer for you to look at the pen than look at my face, so let's do that. Alright, so here we go with the pen. I'm just going to show you this. As a size comparison, you can see this is a larger pen, right? It's it's a, a bit longer and it's definitely girthier. So a very, in my mind, a very nice size next to this Pilot Parallel. Okay, so what does that to say about this um, pen? Formaldehyde and I believe formal formal make Bakelite, an early plastic, easy to mold. So that's used. You don't, in my mind, see a whole lot of Bakelite anymore, but it's entirely likely you wouldn't really care much about the history, but you just care about how the pen feels. There is a very interesting sensation, tactile sensation, to holding this pen. And I don't know how well you can see this, but it looks like there is ever so slightly a little bit of a pattern in this. Uh, I also seem to recall that Bakelite is quite brittle, so I'm very careful with this uh, pen not to drop this one. Okay, what makes this pen so special? Well, it's called Seven Treasures, and that is because in the finial, that's something we really need to talk about for a bit, is this beautiful piece of artwork. And this is Shipoyaki. Now, I may mispronounce that. Um, I thought in Japanese the eyes were kind of silent, so shippo yak, yak. I, I'm sorry, I, I just don't really know how to pronounce it. It consists of several materials, gold, silver, emerald, coral, giant clamshell, glass, and pearl. Seven different types of materials, hence seven treasures. That is combined, it is applied to a copper surface and then it's baked and Okagaki Yukie is the master artisan who makes these things so that I think is really what sets this pen apart and I will say is beautiful I'll be honest it's not a technique I had ever heard of but that's obviously just like a, a, a gap in my knowledge um, 
not anything else. Uh, it is very attractive and I, I'm really happy with the way the camera captures this because it's a very nice vibrant green which does look unique. That That is, I, I, I can't say I've ever seen anything like this. So that I think really makes this pen stand out. It's a piston filled pen. It holds 1.1 milliliters of ink. It has an ebonite feed and it has a steel nib. If you purchase this pen with the steel nib, it's $300 US. If you upgrade to the 18 karat gold nib that this pen has, it's uh, 430 US. And there's also, uh, a, I want to say a gold plated Yovo nib, but I could be wrong with that. You can also upgrade to a, a, a Yovo nib, but I don't think that's a solid gold nib. I, I, I seem to recall that was a steel nib with maybe gold plating or something. So that's pretty much it. That's it for the pen. Now let's let's talk about the parts of the pen because that was the background. So parts of the pen you have that Shibuyaki uh, artwork on top, which I think again is really pretty. You have this gold-colored ring surrounding it, and then you have the clip. And the clip is a ball-type clip, which typically works very well to uh, put something in your pocket or in a, a pen case or something. We could try that out, I suppose, as we speak. Here we have a pen case. Here we have the pen and it does slip in easily. I lifted up the clip a little bit with my fingernail and it slips in quite easily. So that is really nice. Then we have these two rings, uh, bands on the cap, which I like. Again, it's a bit Parker Jewel Fold in, in style. And then we have this pen barrel that tapers down to the piston turning knob. It is one of those ratcheting pistons. It makes a sound when you, when you uh, turn it and it sort of overturn it. The nice thing about that is you can't really overturn it so you don't snap off the piston easily in these because pistons can break, right? Okay, so we have the clip. The clip is nice and springy. We have the shape of the pen. We have the, the artwork. Beyond that, there is nothing on this pen. No markings, no brand name, nothing, which I personally kind of like. The pen unscrews and this is a larger pen, as I said. It's not a small pen. Doesn't really post. I mean, it does, but there's a bit of a danger. The piston turning knob is turning as I'm doing this, so you could expel ink, so I wouldn't necessarily um, do that. Then, what else do we have? We have a section, which is a very nice, classic, hourglass-shaped section. I often find those very comfortable, and this pen is not an exception. The threads are cut nicely, they're not too sharp. The barrel is a little sharp. A step down. However, given the shape of the pen, I'm not bothered by the sharpness because I don't rub against it. So that is really quite nice. Now we have the 18 karat solid gold nib with the Wancher logo. Uh, it, it also says Wancher 18K750 and B for broad and this is a laser engraved nib. And here we have the ebonite feed. Okay, now what? Here's something that I really enjoyed about this pen. <clears throat> I initially thought it was broken, but I then realized, uh, upon actually reading up on this, that it was designed this way, and I think that is an absolutely brilliant touch of design there. Bakelite could discolor with ink. So if you dunk this into a bottle of ink, remember, piston filler, so there's no cartridge converter on this, you have to use bottled ink. This could discolor, and that's an issue. So what do you do if you don't want your section to discolor? Well, you can't just fill the converter because there is no converter. Well, you can just make a section that you can unscrew. And then the pen, of course, looks fairly hideous, but that's not a problem because this is only there for you to ink up the pen. Now you ink it up. This, I'm assuming, is plastic of some kind. You just wipe it off, and when you're done, you take the section, you put that back on, and there's no discoloration, which I think is a really neat, well thought out, um, not really filling system, but aspect of the filling system here. So I really like that. I think that covers all the parts of the pen. I think what we need to do next is see how it writes. Last sheet in my notebook, by the way. Historic moment, isn't it? Okay, so what do we have? We have the Wancher. 
seven treasures. Uh, Bakelite. Fire. We have a an 18k uh, broad nib and the ink is La Bombe Blue which I recently got and which I became really <laughs> quite a big fan of. That's right. So I have been playing with this for a bit and what I found is that the nib is very very smooth but it's also a little over polished and it becomes clear in specific angles of holding the pen more than other angles. This is also something you could fix fairly easily yourself um, but it is a bit over polished and if you're talking 430 US you would like to avoid that. So if I do some fast writing It does pretty well, and I think my natural writing angle is very well suited for this pen, so I have no issues, but Aziza has used this pen, and she did run into trouble with the pen skipping quite a bit. So it may have been just her, her angle, it's, it's a bit different from mine. So I'm just providing that as extra input for you. Again, this is not a big deal, it is something you can get fixed, or you can fix yourself, but of course, at a certain price, you would kind of like that to be fantastic out of the box. I will say it is very smooth, but that's the point, right? With over-polishing, you get a very smooth nib, um, but it's because over-polished, it's a bit prone to skipping and such. You see, it's not the wettest writer in the world, uh, but one thing I will say, these are fairly thin tines. There is a bit of line variation. Now, it's not advertised as a flex nib, so we are going to be very, very careful, right? But even with a bit of pressure, I'm really not putting on much pressure, you can see that quite a bit of funky line variation is possible. So that if, if that is something you enjoy, that sort of added character to your writing with a nib that is a little bouncy, then this is really a good nib for you, I think, because it is very pleasant, I will say that, and it does respond very nicely. Finally, we have that was a hard start there, uh, but then I did push it a bit there. Uh, there is the reverse writing. As you can see, that's not bad at all. In fact, I would say that takes it from... I'm not sure if I find this the broadest nibs uh, of nibs. I would say this is a good medium, but then Japanese brand, Japanese broad, Japanese Western medium, maybe. But this is a nice fine, so you can definitely make it a, a finer grade, and it's smooth. Some nibs, when you turn them over, get very scratchy, especially with very light pressure. This is not scratchy, and it keeps writing. So for those of you who really enjoy that upside-down writing, that, that is an option. Of course, yep, there was another skip. Uh, a kind thank you, and another one, uh, to um, Wancha for sending us the pen. I appreciate it. I... I think we should talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen. All right, what do I like, what do I not like about the Wancher 7 Seas, 7 Seas, well, 7 Treasures Bakelite Fire. I should probably close this a bit, shouldn't I? I'm, I'm too pale and my forehead increases in size, uh, so I reflect a lot. Now, what do I like about it? I think this pen has a couple of really powerful things going for it. It's a bit bigger. It's very comfortable. I really must say, very comfortable pen. Not too heavy because of that material, not a lot of metal parts, it seems, because it's really quite light. Solid grip that makes it very comfortable to hold. Nice number six nib that in principle writes well. Again, depends a bit on your angle. And the issue with these things is always, I get one pen. So I don't know if this is one nib that is a bit over polished or if it's all like that. I can't say that. I can't speak to that. The artwork is beautiful. This I really like. I, I didn't think I would, but I do. And I, this is actual artwork, right? It's not just something that's machine made and put on top there. So I think that is a, a very cool feature of this pen as well. It's hard to describe. Maybe you'll be able to see this in... Um, in the pictures, I'll try to do it justice, but it's very difficult. There is a sort of, it's a smooth pen, but visually there is a bit of a texture in it that reminds me a bit of micarta or something. 
again, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's it's not it, it looks like there is something going on, even though it is smooth, which I find visually quite appealing. So we have size of the pen, artwork, uh, we have very high comfort level. I think it's really neat. Uh, 1.1 millimeter ink capacity. Did I say millimeter? Milliliter? I don't know what I said, but 1.1 milliliter ink capacity. That I think is very nice, and it has all those things going for it. Now, what about things I don't like so much? Well, there are a few as well. To be honest, the price it's not super low, but on the other hand. You can have it for 300 bucks with a steel nib. It has the artwork on it, bigger pen, piston filler. I don't think that is a horrid pen. Uh, sorry, a horrid price for a pen like this with sort of personalized artwork on it. I think that's a pretty fair price actually. And the gold nib upgrade, yeah, it's 130 bucks extra. That's a lot, but even that is not terrible um, with the pricing of some gold nibs. So I don't think that's that's terrible. There is some issues with this this specific nib being a bit over polished. That is uh, absolutely true. Um, so there is that. But again, I only have one exemplar, so I, 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 it's difficult to speak to that. I mean, if that's always the case, there are two things that I would say that that I I struggle a bit more with. And then there is this. The final one, I don't really consider a big deal, but this to me looks like someone just lopped off that top of the cap and then put this thing on. I would have, I think, enjoyed a little bit more if this would really be a finial on top of a pen that's a natural, sorry, on top of the cap that's a natural extension of the rest of that cap. This this flat, flat thing, as soon as I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. And I don't know if it really works for me, that aesthetic, but that's again a personal thing. The two things I wanted to talk about with this. One, there's no ink window. So you can't really tell how much ink you have left. In a piston filler, that's always a bit of an issue. And this doesn't really help either because that's the nib color. So you, you can't use that as an ink window either, in my mind. So that's a bit of an issue. By the way, I do love that section that can be unscrewed. That's a very clever move. So I love that. My other issue, in addition to not having an ink window, is that the piston turning knob on this particular pen is very loose, is not really the word, but requires a very light touch. And it starts to unscrew really easily. So if you do make the mistake of posting the pen, which in principle is possible, this does stick quite well to the barrel, though it becomes very long, and not many people would do that. Now, if you take off the cap, you could be working on the piston, it could expel ink. Now that in itself, I think, again, is not very likely. I don't really think this was designed with posting in mind, given how long it gets. But even just touching it, there we go, that was a drop of ink. So that wasn't a lot of motion I put in there in my mind, and that happened. So be aware, there's no blind cap, and it it's a very smooth mechanism, which is great. Just be careful that, one second, you don't end up with this. Okay, that's all. Having said that, if you're aware of it, I'm sure it's not a, a massive issue to you, but it is something to be aware of. Especially if you are, like I, I tend to, when I'm sitting in a meeting or something, and I tend to just sort of finick, is that a, a, a verb? Like I, I, I just fiddle with a pen a bit. And at this point, I'm already, I know I'm already operating that, that piston. So that's in my mind a bit of an issue. But then the the upside to that is it's a very smooth mechanism when you fill up the pen. So I mean, there's also something to be said for that. Okay, I think I've spent enough time on that. Overall, I really like it. I think it's a really nice pen. And that's it. I hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you.